Our today's piece is dedicated to vectors, and we're sharing it with Lucy, who sent her question to us, and for the rest of the world. In the broad sense, vector is a quantity which has both magnitude and direction. For example, acceleration, speed, displacement, force are vector quantities. The thing is that you have to know both magnitude and direction, otherwise knowing only one of them would be incomplete information. For example, if you want to help somebody to, to find a place they are looking for, you should tell how far and which way to go, i.e. set the displacement vector for them, giving information about its magnitude and direction. Now, vectors are shown as arrows. The direction of an arrow shows the direction of a particular vector, and its length indicates the vector's magnitude or so-called absolute value. A vector can be denoted by a small letter with an arrow above it, or with a pair of capitals, like this, with an arrow above them as well, where the first letter stands for the name of the initial point of the vector, and the second stands for the name of the terminal point of the vector. It is convenient to show vectors on the coordinate plane because it allows to display vectors, magnitude and direction. Let's take a look. Right here we have points A and B with coordinates 2, 1 and 4, 3. We connect them and we obtain the vector AB. It turned out that it's very convenient to represent vectors by pairs of numbers, which are called the coordinates of the vector. And those are calculated in the following way. Each of the coordinates of the vector is a difference of the corresponding coordinates of the terminal point of the vector and its initial point. So if we wanted to calculate the coordinates for the AB vector, we would subtract the x-coordinate of the initial point from the x-coordinate of the terminal point, and the same would go for the y-coordinate. So we would go like this, 4 minus 2 and 3 minus 1. Again, we're subtracting the x-coordinate of the initial point of the vector from, its, uh, from the x-coordinate of its terminal point. And the same goes for the y's. So the coordinates of the AB vector are 2 and 2. Now you could notice that the coordinates of the vector are nothing else than its projection onto the coordinate axis. By common agreement, first comes the projection of the vector onto the x-axis, and then comes the projection onto the y-axis. Now, let's go through it one more time. Again, we have points C and D, C being with the coordinates 4 and 0, and D with the coordinates 6 and 2. We connect them and we obtain the vector CD. Let's now calculate its coordinates. So again, we subtract the corresponding coordinates of the initial point from the corresponding coordinates of the terminal point of the vector. So we go like this. 6 minus 4 and 2 minus 0. So the coordinates of the CD vector are 2 and 2 as well, just as a B vector did. As a matter of fact, we could say that CD vector is the AB vector, only it moves a little bit. And this would have been correct if at least one of these two vectors would be a free vector, which means that it moves along the coordinate plane, retaining its magnitude and direction. However, if a vector is understood by an ordered pair of points, such two vectors can't be considered equals, even if they have the same coordinates, uh, exactly as we have in our case right here. Vectors A, B and C, D are considered the ordered pair of points A, B and then C and D. So these two vectors, A, B and C, D, can't be called equal. Now for three-dimensional cases, Vectors are represented by triplets of numbers, and these numbers are calculated exactly the same way as for the two-dimensional cases. Now let's talk 
about what we can do with vectors. First of all, we can multiply a vector by a number. <clears throat> Suppose we have the vector a, and we want it multiplied by 2. We want to obtain a vector. two a's, which would be directed exactly the same way as the initial one, as the a vector, but its length would be two times greater. Then, if we multiply the vector a by one half, we would still obtain a vector directed the same way as a, only this time its magnitude would be twice as small. So this one is one half a. So, if we multiply the vector by a positive number, we obtain the vector directed the same way as the initial one, only with its magnitude changed. But, if we multiply the vector by a negative number, we would obtain the vector with the changed magnitude, and the magnitude changes just as we've discussed a minute ago, uh, but its direction would be opposite to the initial ones. So if we wanted to multiply vector, vector a by negative 3, we would obtain the vector directed the opposite way, and 3 times longer. So this one is negative 3 a's. Also, the vectors can be added. Suppose we have two vectors, vector a and vector b. And we want to add them. One of the possible approaches here is using the triangle rule. According to this rule, you should move one of the two vectors being added so that uh, its initial point would coincide with the terminal point of the other one. Let's move the vector b. So we're moving it so that its initial point coincides with the terminal point of the vector a. Then, according to the triangle rule, we connect the initial point of the first vector being added, which is a, with the terminal point of the second vector being added, which is b. Now this new blue vector is the vector of their sum, a plus b. Now we can see why this rule is called a triangle rule. Because the vectors a, b and a plus b form a nice triangle. Similarly, we can add any number of vectors simply placing each next vector's initial point into the end point of the previous one. And this rule is called a polygon rule, because the vectors being added form a polygon. Let's see. Suppose we have vectors A, B, C, and D. Let's add them using the polygon rule. So we're placing the each next uh, initial point into the end point of the previous one. So we're placing the initial point of B into the terminal point of the A vector. Then we're placing the initial point of the C vector into the terminal point of the B vector. for the d vector. Note that these vectors are being moved along the coordinate plane, along the plane, retaining its magnitude and direction. Now, according to the polygon rule, 
we connect the initial point of the first vector being added, which is A, with the terminal point of the last vector being added, which is D. So this new red vector is the vector of their sum. So this one right here is vector A plus B plus C and plus D. Now let's consider subtraction. Again, suppose we have two vectors, A and B. This is B and this is A. The idea is that if you wanted to subtract vector B from vector A, it would be exactly the same as if you wanted to add vectors A and negative B. Have a look. A minus B equals to A plus negative B. And this negative B vector is nothing else than vector B multiplied by negative 1 which means that this new negative b vector has same magnitude as the b vector and opposite direction. So, our negative b vector would be like this. Let's now add these two vectors using the triangle rule. So we're placing the initial point of negative b vector into the terminal point of the a vector. And then we connect the initial point of a with the terminal point of the negative b. And this new blue vector is the vector of the sum of the vectors a and negative b or the vector of difference of vectors a and b. Very simple. Now there is another way to add two vectors. Let's try that one. Again, suppose we have two vectors, A and B. Hmm. Another approach here is using the parallelogram rule. According to this rule, you should uh, move two vectors so that their initial points coincide. This is the first step. So we're doing it. Mm -hmm. A and B. Then, according to this rule, we should build a parallelogram on these two vectors, which means that we have to build two missing sides of the parallelogram, each of them being parallel and equal to the corresponding opposite one. The diagonal of this newly obtained parallelogram is the required vector of the sum. So this red vector right here is the vector of the sum, A plus B. So basically this is how it works. Enjoy!